your is uh, probably uh, my BSc is in Asmara University. Then I I just uh, studied masters of uh, master of science in clinical laboratory science uh, in quality assurance and clinical laboratory management. Uh, then I uh, I I, tra I I just trained my technology when I was uh, completing my BSc degree. Then joined the technology program after rotating in different type of, uh, of uh, departments like microbiology, hematology, serology, and so on. And my job title is the technology certified in American State of Clinical Pathologies. And now. Uh, is a member of National Society of Technology in Africa. Uh, there are many challenges, many challenges, but um, among them, I can explain there is no awareness about the, the profession, uh, no recognition, uh, frequency of training when, we, when you are when you are becoming a technologist. Uh, lack of agents uh, because no one knows uh, about the agents, about them. Uh, there are only few services. That the, the, the job opportunity is very few, a few services in, in Ethiopia. To explain one by one these this, uh, challenges, uh, no awareness, uh, even in medical professionals, no one knows what pathology uh, is doing. Mostly, uh, why even the healthcare professionals say that, why biopsy is saying to lab? What can be done? If there is a blood, it can be tested through the machine, they know, because everyone is awareness of the blood test. But no one is awareness, uh, aware of uh, the test in tissue that cancer analysis can be done. Uh, that awareness also is, is no recognition. Like uh, the second one is even in government of, uh, government offices like Ministry of Health, uh, Food and Drug Administration that recognize every health professionals. There is no rules and regulations that govern uh, to technology. So if you say, to this office, I am a technologist. They don't know what it is. So that may that this uh, encourage to be a technology, even the government of I mean. Uh, the third issue is frequency of training. Once we are a technology in pathology and anatomic pathology, there is no training. Mostly in microbiology, there is a frequency. There is a lot of frequency of training, like TB. Uh, HIV or something like that. There are deep updating. You are updating by different types of training, either that are fund or government uh, funded uh, trainings. If you are in hematology, there are a lot of, if, not like other departments, but there is the training. If you are in parasitology, the same, but the same thing happens. But pathology is a forgotten department in Ethiopia. There is no or very few training. When I joined uh, St. Paul Hospital, I and my, uh, my immediate boss, Dr. Barakat, uh, uh, try his best. He's a very good uh, anatomic pathologist, pathologist. So he communicated with the American Center of Clinical Pathology at Michigan University. So he brought uh, different type of training, the technology, uh, immunistic chemistry and different. So that makes a, a little taste what the analytic pathology looks like. But I have never seen or a very low frequency of uh, training in that way. Uh, the third issue is lack of agents, uh, lack of equipment or something like that. That, that, that is encourage you why, why you you, you don't prefer to be a technologist in Ethiopia. And the last is, uh, there are few services in Ethiopia. Uh, I published one, one study in Ethiopia that, that uh, the title is Status of Technology in Ethiopia. At that, at that study, 
Uh, it is published in American Journal of Clinical Pathologies in October 2019. Uh, at that paper, at that study, it shows that there are only 13 anatomic pathology laboratory in Ethiopia. And in the eastern part of Ethiopia, in Afar, Redawa, uh, and Somali region, there is no service at all. There are about 40.1 million population. Well, so people are forced, especially women with breast lymph node, to test spinal respiration. It's a very simple technique, you know. To find such service, she has to travel about 200 kilometers. Wow. Well, this is scarcity that makes why I became into technology because there is no job opportunity. There is a limited service. That limited service makes this discourage to be uh, to technologies. That are biggest challenge. And then she is an eye for the technologies. Every, every corner of the world, I can say, if they feel like me. You know why? It is a great input. And feeling of recognition, because as I told you, there is no recognition of the technology in Ethiopia. But to be a member of National Society of Technology in SH, I feel that, okay, uh, okay, this profession is recognized, so I am recognized. So that recognition encourages me how I can contribute or how do I feel that my profession is uh, recognized worldwide. For that, 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 that recognition gives me uh, great encouragement. Uh, second is problem solving. You see that I involve mostly in the asking question and replying for question if I know that that makes uh, there is no reference at all either human being or textbooks in Ethiopia to to solve the problems happened in the lab. NSH can solve NSH family from my my account from the account that national search they can they can solve the problem. Problem solving problem. Okay. Then updating, updating means updating about the things that about the, the uh, science of the technology. Uh, increase my awareness of the technology science. Uh, knowledge sharing. Mm. <clears throat> Third, I know what I lack in knowledge in equipment that I know to perform. So it is great, great. I, I can I can explain. I have not to express how NSH is valuable for one of the technologists in the world. Okay, my name is David Davis. I'm a histologist for about 35, going on 40 years. Started at the university, the Research Institute of Infectious Diseases with the military. Moved on to Colorado. I was there for almost 30 years. Retired now in Costa Rica. Now I'm helping out more in. Uh, countries in Central America and Africa. In Africa, I've been to, uh, I've made 20 trips to 12 different countries over going over teaching, training, giving them equipment, used equipment, and just trying to have them work out procedures and problems that they occur. Each country is a little different, but they have some similarities. So what are some of the most common problems you see for histology labs in Africa? Well, I think there's actually, I noted down three different major problems. And I think that's probably typical in most labs, but training is one. And along the training lines, a lot of the people, uh, first off, the countries recognize medical technologists. They don't really, hardly any of them recognize histologists. So I get most of the people that I work with from the medical technology laboratory and train them. The few histologists that they do have, have been trained by people, some of them uh, just kind of hand me down. So any bad habits, they will continue. So they need a little more training as far as uh, uh, online training or videos or whatever I think the NSH or ASCQ could provide. The second real issue is equipment. Equipment is all used pretty much. Uh, periodically, some countries will be able to obtain some uh, 
new equipment, but a lot, a lot of the labs in the different countries uh, are using used equipment from the United States or Europe. And the reason they have these, these uh, Europe and the United States have this equipment to give them is because they phased them out and went on to buying new equipment. So this, these older pieces of equipment are still usable, but a lot of times you have to really manipulate them and, and uh, tweak them so they can be usable. And I think the third real problem is supplies. I've been to a few countries and then go back and I see the, the uh, reagents that the supply people have given them has changed. So the consistency on supplies and re the replaceable things uh, aren't always the same. So each time that they, like an H&E, if you get a new hematoxin or new eosin, you're gonna have to work up a new procedure and they don't always know how to do that unless they're, you know, they, they really need to get more involved in troubleshooting, but where does that come from? It comes from training. So I think that's where NSH can really help. Other problems that I've had in countries like Madagascar and Tanzania, specimens would come in, but it was questionable sometimes the solution they came in. A lot of times they'd be autolyzed or spoiled, broke down, whatever. And, or sometimes they'd be coming in in formaldehyde, which is 10 times too strong. And if you ever wanted to do an immunohistochemistry or send it off to some lab to do immunohistochemistry, the tissue is pretty well shot or it's really hard to recover as antigen sites. So that's just, just some of the, the high points, I guess, of the, some of the problems that we ran into. I think that some of the, the pathologists too, they have to be a little better trained sometimes for being able to make, make those diagnoses. And they, they sure could use IHC. And I've started two or three of the countries into doing the IHC by manually. But the problem is there, does the pathologist know how to interpret it? So there's, there's a number of problems that, that uh, you run into. Other problems that they have is there, a lot of the patients have to travel on a bus two and three hours to get to a lab. Back, what, about a year, a year and a half ago, I helped uh, uh, set up the first histology lab in the country of Liberia. So what does that tell you? One histology lab for the whole country, and so they have to commute in. Another thing, too, is patients, they, they're afraid to come in to the, to the clinic. And, you know, early diagnosis can save their lives, but a lot of them, anyway, they've, they're afraid to come in because they've had family members come in, and uh, they don't they don't return home. They end up uh, passing away and they just, they, and so they're afraid to go in to see, to see what their problems are. It gets worse, then it's sometimes too late. So there, we have a lot of problems in Africa and I enjoy doing it, but it, uh, we could, I think, do a better job through, through education. And uh, I, I know the NSH and ASCP are stepping out trying to help these people.